hello, hello, my friends. Today is a good day. We are going to be talking all about the birth of Alfa Romeo. Let's do it. So I said we were going to do the birth of Alpha, and we are, but we're also going to be doing up to World War II. So let's go. Alfa Romeo is a beloved Italian automotive manufacturer. However, it was founded by a French investor, a gentleman named Alexander de Rock, who at the time had been making something like 10% of every French vehicle. He came over in 1906 and with a little bit of money from some investors from Milan, they founded the Societa Anamana Italiana de Rock. That is not easy to say. So like I said, de Rock was an odd bird. At one point in time, he was producing 10% of all French vehicles, but he didn't even care about cars and he didn't even like the driving experience. Homeboy was just in it for the money and the manufacturing. Duroc did not feel that the company was producing or cranking out as many cars as he thought was profitable. He went ahead and sold all of his assets to investors and got out of there. And with that change, the company would be known as Alpha. Anonima Lombardo Fabrica Automobili. And in 1915 is when we would see the man behind the Romeo name, Nicola Romeo, step onto the scene to manage Alpha during World War I, producing war munitions, aircraft engines, and, and other necessary military hardware for the war effort. And in 1920, Nicola Romeo would tack his name on the end of Alpha. That would also be the year with the Torpedo 20 and 30 horsepower being the first alphas to bear the Alfa Romeo name. Also in that same year, Giuseppe Campari took first at the Mugello and Enzo Ferrari would take second at the Targa Florio. Yes, yes, that legendary cantankerous automotive icon Enzo Ferrari. You see, he had just left Fiat to race for Alfa Romeo. It was also Enzo Ferrari that talked the talented Vittorio Giano into leaving Fiat and coming over to Alfa Romeo to serve as chief engineer in 1923. And Vittorio Giano would quickly jump into designing the P2 and the straight eight cylinder that powered it. The P2 would go on to win the 1925 World Championship for Grand Prix cars. And that power plant would serve as the classic engine configuration for all Alphas of that time. Just Eight years after he tacked on the other half of Alpha's name, Nicola Romeo would exit Alpha. And just a few years after that, the government would take over Alpha Romeo and it would become an emblem of Mussolini's Italy. Actually, not much goes good when the government takes over anything, but we would see some pretty spectacular and breathtaking cars shooting out of Alpha. Truly, in the 1930s, we would see some very beautiful cars coming out of Alfa Romeo. Many of the vehicles leaving Alfa Romeo were very bespoke automobiles for wealthy clientele, handmade from some of the most esteemed carrozzerias. Speaking of beauty, let's talk about the 8C. The 8C was a range of sports, race, and road cars of the 1930s. And what does 8C mean? Well, it's that straight 8 configuration made from Vittorio Giano. And that engine would be used from 1931 to 1939. The 8C2300 you see here, named in reference to its 1,336 cc engine. It was a car designed to race and it took its first victory at the Targa Floria. It would then go on to win the Grand Prix at Monza, earning its nickname Monza. And Alpha didn't stop there. Quickly, they debuted the 8C2300 Le Mans, which would go on to win the 1931 Le Mans. Also, I got to see one of these in person at the Simeon Automotive Foundation Museum. Sadly, Dr. Simeon just passed away within this month. A legend in uh, car collecting, that's for sure. Now, during this time at Alfa Romeo, it was Enzo's Scuderia Ferrari that was acting as their race team. And the Alfa Romeo by Motori, which I have no idea if I'm saying that correct or not, built by Enzo and Luigi Bazzi to wear the prancing horse badge. So 
the Bimatori I just mentioned was kind of an odd bird. It was powered by two 3.2 liter engines, one placed at the front and the back, but due to uneven weight distribution, it handled rather poorly and uh, it was also hard on the tires and petrol. In 1935, we would see the introduction of the famed Alfa Romeo 8C2900. The 8C2900 was a car that was designed for competition and particularly taking a win at Milamiglia. It was powered by, you guessed it, the eight cylinder 2.9 liter supercharged engine. Just a year after debuting at the London Motor Show, Scuderia Ferrari would enter three 8C2900s into the 1936 Milamiglia and all three would take first, second, and third. And the following year, they would take first and second. From 1935 to 1936, only 10 of the 8C2900s were made. In 1937, we would see the production of the 8C2900B with two chassis options, corto or lungo, short or long. This is a breathtaking example of a 8C2900B Longo done with, with Carrozzeria Touring Superleggera body. I got to see this at the Alfa Romeo Museum. Um, I think it was 2019 that I went. Pretty freaking awesome. This is the 8C2900 Millimiglia that won the 1938 Millimiglia, and this is also available to view at the Simeone Automotive Museum Foundation. Frankly, it was with the 8C2900B Type 35 that Alpha Racing would peak before the start of World War II. Now, also, what would happen right before World War II? Well, Enzo Ferrari in 1939 would have a disagreement with Alfa Romeo and be dismissed. And he would go on to create the Ferrari we know and love. Is there anything in that story that surprised you? Did you know that there was a French investor that basically started Alfa Romeo? How beautiful was that 8C2900B Lungo at the Alfa Museum? I was so happy when Alfa Romeo got back into Formula One racing because they are one of the automotive manufacturers that are still around that had such a big part in early racing history. If you're enjoying this video and you like car history and you like informal car videos, it's really it's just me, my Samsung, and this little clicker thingy, well then go ahead and press the subscribe button, the like button, and if you don't, that's perfectly fine too. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed this very informal but fun history on the birth of Alfa Romeo. Let me know if you have any suggestions on next topics. I try and put a video out every week. Um, I'll be going to Pebble Beach in August, which I'm really excited about. One of the featured marks is the Alfa Romeo 8C, so you'll be seeing a lot of cool videos from there. It's time for me to go and have a beer somewhere. So, bye! It's like a family tree